Be holy, no, for I am holy. You should live your life now being sanctified. The very reason because God is holy. So I have entitled our message for this morning, Be Holy for God is Holy. As we move on with all the knowledge that we have in studying the word of God and put it all, how we can digest it and apply it in our very lives. So this morning, no, this is the proposition for us this morning. That God's holiness demands holy living. And three things that we will study you know, that would help us you know, with that pre proposition. Okay? Number one, we will study from this passage that we have just read about the declaration of God himself. No, from uh, Leviticus chapter 11. And this is the foundational truth. Okay? This is about the claim of God about his person, which is the very foundation of the second one, the very reason why God demands holiness from the Israelites. Because without that foundational truth, no, no reason. We cannot answer why, why God commanded it. And then number three, now this is a, a financial, no, a commerce, commercial accounting term, the dividends or the, the product. No, and this serves as our motivation. The first one is about the knowledge. Number two is that it will result no. Uh, life, change lives I thought. and then number three is the motivation why we need to do it the dividends or the profit or the benefit no, we receive from God's holiness many times no, as believers or others many times no, we are always torn off when we say about holiness about God's holiness no? Pastor Long said that it's like, no, that's one of the topics that we don't want to discuss, to hear. But, no, as we study hope, no, we will learn the benefit, okay, from it, okay? So, let's move on. Let's move on with, no, number one, as we go to our, uh, text, Revelation chapter 11. Uh, will you please open your Bibles? The first thing that we will learn is about the declaration of God you know, about himself, which is, I, I said that this is the foundational truth of the, the two you know, uh, topics or in our outline, the declaration of God himself. So as you open your Bibles, we know that this is part of the command of the Lord to the Israelites, not prior to uh, uh, possessing the promised land. This is his command, his very instruction for them while they are still not on uh, the wilderness. This is in preparation, and at the same time, the, ex the, the instruction of the Lord on how they should relate to him being a holy God. No, that, that's why uh, it talks about, in this uh, very chapter, it talks about clean and unclean animals. And, the, and on the last part of this chapter, no, and I believe this is the key verse of, of Leviticus. The reason why God commanded things that you should do this, and these things that you, you should not do. These things that you should embrace. And these things that you should forsake. The do's and the don'ts. The reason why God commanded it. And so in verse 44 of chapter 11, it really talks about the personality of God. Why he wants them to live a separated life. 
why they were instructed on how they should behave. Because according to this passage, now in verse 44, it says there, For I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. And it says there, you know, it tells them, first and foremost, that He is God. He is God. He is not just some other person. He is not just the king. He is not just a leader of the Israelites. But He is God. He is the God of the universe. He is the creator. Okay? He is the God, the supreme person. And not only he is God, but at the same time, no, for I am what? The Lord, what? Your God. It speaks of the relationship of God with the Israelites. He's not just the God of the universe, the creator of the universe, but it talks about a special relationship that He is their God. The Israelites are the people of God as it is based on the covenant that God gave no, in, with Abraham. He is their God. And not only that He is their God, but at the same time, He says there, I am holy. He is a holy God. He is a holy God. God specifically introduced Himself being a personal God and attached to it who He is as their personal God. Dili lang siya leader nila, but at the same time, this very important attribute of God that is holy. That is holy. Okay? That means the Lord their God is holy. The Lord their God in which they are in relationship with, He is a holy God. And knowing this, it leads us to our second. What is the emphasis of God saying that He is a holy God to them? Why He emphasizes this, For I am the Lord your God. Okay? For I am holy. Why they should live. Okay? The emphasis of it is this. We know about the holiness of God for no mga Sundays prior. No, this is this will just serve us, no, a, a reminder sa ato what does the holiness of God? It it means first, no, about this attribute, the essence of who God is, and then number two, it's about the moral and ethical emphasis. Okay, so first the emphasis of His holiness as His attributes, the essence of who God is. That holiness is the foremost attribute of all because it pervades. Okay? What does that mean when it, it says there it pervades? It embodied. Okay? All other attributes of God. And is consistent of who, all He is and what He does. Being a holy God. Okay? Holy justice. His holy name, no? it is connected, it embodies, it pervades all the attributes of God. Okay? Exodus 15, 11, the word of God says, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods, who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders, 1 Samuel 2, 2, There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. In His personality, in which, in His attribute, it pervades or embodies all His attributes, what can we say about it? That it has to do with what? 
no, as what Pastor Long, sa mga preaching na to, that it talks about, no, in fact, the word holy, being separate. It has to do with the separateness and the difference. Sige no. That the word of God many times, it projects God being there, up there. The, the eminence of God. Not only that, He is also absolute distinct from all. He is different from all. Because He is, what? Above. He is infinitely greater and most powerful. As the Lord says in the verses that we have read, there is nothing that which I can be compared of. It sets Him higher above all beings. Ingan lang ginoo, pinakataas yun siya. That is, no, being eminent. Okay? And then not only that, as His attributes, the essence of who God is, but at the same time, the emphasis of God's holiness is this. No? On moral and ethical. And what is that? No? Number one, it points to God's majestic purity and ultimate ethical beauty. That is why we entitled our introductory message, The Beauty of God's Holiness. Because you know, when you understand the holiness of God, it's all about His excellence and His perfection that sets Him high above being perfect. As It's in the beauty. Many times, may ngunta, no? Guapa kaya siya, but there is an imperfection. It might be, di lang ko gusto sa iyang ilong. Something that you dislike. Di lang ko ganahan sa iyang dunggan. No? I don't like or nindot iyang beauty, but his attitude, dili. Then it's not perfect, but God is perfect. Okay? It's about moral perfection. Wala gud say saya, sala. Nothing's wrong with him as he is perfect. Nothing that you should dislike him. Okay? Being morally pure. What he thinks, his intentions, his desire, his purpose. Okay, that's God being holy. And then God's holiness is the moral and ethical standard. He is the law. That is why, no, gisadihan nito that His holiness is in His word, and not only in His word but also in His work. Let's remember that He is the law as He sets the standard. Why? Because God is holy. The problem right now, as we look on the whole world, you know, about morality and ethics, it's different with what the Word of God. Because many times it is based on what most people do, rather than being grounded in the Word of God, that many times the morality, the ethics of men, you know, is no longer right. Okay? That many times the questions. This man has still the moral ascendancy to live. How about his ethical value? Because it's no longer based on God. Let's remember that the, holy, the holiness of God, it's all about the moral and ethical standard. He is the law. He, is, he sets the standard. Then what else? He cannot condone evil or have any relationship to it. Psalm 11, 4 to 6. Because God is perfect. Nothing's wrong in Him. And because of His holiness, He cannot condone evil and or have any relationship to which is evil. Okay? What else? It is not merely... Now, let's remember this. It is not merely total separation from uncleanness. But it is a passive goodness beyond our capacity to understand as most probably many times, no, this is as man is driven with his needs. How, 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 oh no, what, what profit he can get, the benefits that they can get. And this is one of the implications of the holiness of God because as he is perfect, there is the positive goodness. His intentions is pure, it's good. What he's doing is perfect, it's good. 
Nothing good nga makasaway, makasulti ka nga dautan because he is perfect. No? A positive goodness that is beyond our understanding. Okay? The sovereignty of God. Okay? And it speaks of the quality of his work. It speaks of the quality of his work towards us. His quality towards the universe in uh, creating the whole universe as God. No, towards the end of his creation that everything was good. It's perfect. Everything is in harmony. Everything works good. It benefits men. It gives enjoyment to men. As that is the intention of God. That is why in our introduction, no, when we talk about the holiness of God, it's all about excellence. It's all about being perfect. Okay? It's about perfection. That is the holiness of God. And that leads us because he is holy in, in, in his person and his emphasis on moral and ethical and what he's doing, it's not only satisfactory, but it's beyond for it is excellence. Then this lays the ground why the Lord commanded the Israelites to be separated or to live a holy life. Okay? So that leads us to the second one. The demand of God for the demand of God to live a holy life because he is holy. The demand of God for being himself, being holy. He demands what? In in our text, Leviticus eleven four, no? Igon no? The Lord said, Ye shall therefore what? sanctify or separate yourself why God has given them the, do, the do's and the dots why they should live uh, unique or separate from their neighbors why God said that they should do this and this and this and they should not do this okay that you shall be holy that is his command. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves. And you shall be holy. Again, balikita. Why? Because the Lord he is the Lord your God. And at the same time, now he is a holy God. So that is the command. For them to live a holy life. The disciples, the, the Israelites, they were a chosen people. They are in relation to God. God is their God, and they were his people. And they should cultivate a relationship that is working. And that relationship to work, God gave them his command. Sanctify. Set yourselves no, to be holy. Okay? Or separate. That means the Lord said that you are indeed no, a distinct people for me. Therefore, you should live a separate life. Okay? The word from the original, no, it is a kadash. Okay? Which the implication of no, being clean or consecrated, or dedicated, or not being sanctified, or purified, being clean. Not no, affected, or being uh, defiled by sin. They should live a holy life. Okay? So that is the command of the Lord. And why God again commanded this? This leads us to the second its implication. And what is the implication? First and foremost, why God gave them the command, it's about assimilation. Assimilation. What is that? To imitate or to become like you know, God or in us to become like the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? To become like the Lord Jesus Christ. 
for us believers, not for them, as God is holy, then they should live a holy life. For the New Testament and for us, its implication for us is this, that why God commanded us also you know, to, be, to live a holy life, it's because first and foremost, that is to imitate the Lord Jesus Christ and to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. In reality, okay, in reality, holiness is the goal of our redemption in Christ. Okay? In reality, Christ died that we will be justified. Okay? Ang ginoo na matay sa ito so that we'll be justified. Then we are justified that we may be, that we may be sanctified. Aron, no nga nung ipangamatarong kita, so that, no, mahimot ang balaan sa tubangan si Ginoo. Therefore, holiness is the object of our new creation. Anyone who is Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away, behold, all things are new. We are being saved and born again so that, what? We may grow like the Lord Jesus Christ. Being holy. So, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, the first implication, why it was commended, because it is the desire of God that we will be like the Lord Jesus Christ, being holy. Being not affected by sin. The problem, no? No? And that's the real problem. The problem of men is not about poverty. Of course, no? Problema kita kung watay kwarta. The problem of men, uh, the most improb- important problem of men is not about health. It's not about, no? Unsa ang ato kaimtang. It's not about the things that we know, but the ultimate problem of man that gives miseries and trouble sa tao is sin. Okay? Whether you, you recognize it or not, but that's the root cause of all the problem of man. It's about sin. Why ang tao, why ginakaon? It's because a young character that is deficient. Okay? So it all boils down to sin. And makita natin at the very example of the Lord in the Garden of Eden. It's not the scarcity of food that is the problem. When sin entered, then the result of the curse is that Adam and Eve and men will work very, very hard. Because of sin. The broken relationship. And so, the desire of God for us, why He, no, he reconciled back and through the Lord Jesus Christ so that no, we will become like the Lord Jesus Christ. And then number two, it's all about devotion. Living a life of service to God. Why He commands us to be holy. Not only that we will be li- like the Lord Jesus Christ, but number two, 2 Timothy 2, 21. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared what unto every good work. It's a given because God is holy, therefore, He should also use a clean vessel. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, God can use people who is clean, who is holy. But there are instances also that even no, in the sovereignty of God, not just like how he feeds, 
uh, Elijah sa time ni Ahab. He used the raven. But, no, again, generally, and for us, that is what Apostle Paul said to Timothy. No, that he should purge. Okay? If a man therefore, therefore purge himself from this, on sa mani, mga uncleanness, evil things, then he will become a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for master's use. So, as we go back to this too, about the, the demand no, of God to be holy, it is because He wants us to live a holy and godly life. So that sin will have, have its way in our lives because it is sin that causes miseries and troubles into our lives. Even as believers, when we allow Satan to have his way in our lives, then it re always results to what? The consequence of sin is not any good, nor better, but it's worst. When we see sin gives us a good life and makes us better, then something's wrong with us. Okay? In doing sin, enjoying it, because we think that in them we'll have happiness. No, ingana mong yun ang temptation. Temptation is always a candy coated happiness. Ako balikon, kanunay ang ginarimayid na ko. No? When we allow ourselves to be tempted, kuna na, kadiotra nga kalipay. It's always a happiness that is short. Pero, unsa man, dako kaayo nga pagmahay. Mubo nga kalipay, dako nga pagmahay. Okay? And we should always think of that. The problem many times for us people that we pursue happiness, even if it's out of the will of God, and many times we cannot find happiness, but instead it's enslavement of sin. That it gives us more miseries and troubles without peace. That's the reason why, again, why God commanded us to live a holy life so that we will live you know, in conformity and we'll have that happiness. Instead of pursuing happiness, pursue holiness or obedience in the Word of God. And what is the byproduct of it? It's joy. When we live in obedience to the word of God, serving Him, the byproduct of it is joy beyond compare. There is joy in serving Jesus. Okay? So this leads us to the third, the dividends we receive from God's holiness. Okay, what is the dividend? Dividends. Levitic Leviticus 11.45. No? It reminds them. It gives them the motivation. This no, kani sa atong emotion, why we should. No, sa amo pa ni study, this is orthophatos. That will give us the motivation of studying the word of God, applying it in our lives. Why we should study, give us the wisdom, the knowledge. No, and it will result to what? A godly living, and this is the, the motivation. Okay, because for the Israelites, it says, Therefore I am the Lord, what? that bringeth you out of the land of Egypt to be your God, and ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Three things that we can learn from this, now in which the two is just a byproduct of this. What's really the problem sa ato nga mga Kristohanon that at times, no, uh, we, we live nga kulang kaayo, walay kalipay, because we are not enjoying the favor of God sa atong kinabuhi. 
It's only when we enjoy the favor of God that we'll have this lasting joy. Psalm 11, uh, verse 16, that it is in the presence of God that there is the fullness of joy. Okay? God's favor. Again, baliko na to, nako, during the time after nga nakasala si Adam and si Eve, why life became difficult, difficult to live, even they have work, then there's food. There's still, ingon pa ko no, nga ano nagkalisod ang tao because daghan na kayong tao, no? Because of the favor of God. It separates them. Okay? For us, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, many times we live a difficult life. Because of the absence of the favor of God in our lives. In making decision, we don't trust in the Lord. That is why He is not leading us because we are not trusting Him. Our needs are not provided because first and foremost, we are not seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness or His holiness. We pursue other things instead of vision that it becomes our idol and saying him sa atong kinabuhi we pursue worldly pleasures we pray God bless us but our lives at the actions the words our thoughts no layo kaayos sa gino yet everyday we pray Lord bless us Pero ang atong ginahimo, no? Makasakit sa ginoo. Favor sa ginoo. When we live in holiness, there's the favor of God. Then from that, no? For the Israelites, it is the Lord that bring it. No? The Israelites from the land of Egypt. The land of Egypt, no? It's a land of bondage. They don't have the freedom. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, when we have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, we're freed from the bondage of sin that results miseries and troubles in our lives. Let's, do, let's not go back again to be in bondage of sin and suffer you know, the miseries and troubles that sin brings into our lives. The only way is to live a holy, godly life. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, Again, the problem is they don't have the right relationship with God. So how can they have the favor of God when they are not rightly related with the Lord? So, you shall therefore be holy for I am holy. It talks about the personality of God and that being a holy God, then they should live in right relationship with Him be to live a holy life. For us believers this tonight we will study that. No? Ngano nga gikamend sige no no that we should live holy in all our conversation. Sa atong kinabuhi ngano nga maglive kita holy. It's all, all about right relationship with what? With whom? With God. When we are living a right relationship with God, no? We have his favor and at the same time it talks about no, mao na ang insakto nga pagkinabuhi. <laughs> that's right living, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, to live a holy and godly life. That's the right kind of living as a bro- as a believer. That when you live an ungodly life, that is not right living. When we talk about right living, that means we need to live a holy and godly life. And living a life apart from it that is not, no, madili na insakto nga pagkinabuhi. Okay? In which, as it is a motivation, right relationship with God, of course, assures us His favor. 
And right living makes life nga nindot ikinabuhi. Enjoyable. Not only nga ang atong relationship sa ginoo, no? nagkuan sa ang favor sa ginoo, but at the same time, how we live rightly, especially with the church. No? Just, just imagine when all of us living a holy and godly life, it will result to unity and harmony. But if one or two not living a holy and godly life, it will greatly affect the harmony and the unity of the church. Then let's come closer in our families. Many times the very reason why there is conflict, it's because of what? Our imperfections. But when we live in holiness, in the power of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, again, it develops and strengthens relationships. But when we live in flesh, it destroys relationship. Baasa pa ka sa imo trabahuan, sa simbahan, sa pamilya. When we are living in flesh, it will really destroy relationship. But when we are living a godly, a holy life with the fruit of the Spirit, it promotes, it develops, and it strengthens relationship. Then who, then who benefits? A right living and good relationships. It's us being the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, as we apply the word of God, uh, briefly, okay? You know, true health of the person is his holiness. Okay, again, true health of a person is his holiness. Anything else is ugliness and deformit deformity at character level. Apart from holiness, again, it's all about deformity and ugliness. That results to what? Malfunction of an individual. And malfunction nagani kita, we become a problem. Okay? Again, the holiness of God is about, no, health, the good health of a person. And anything else is all about ugliness and deformity at character level. And it results to malfunction of an individual that results problem. And it crippled, at times, the state of the soul and impact Sa diha, sa palibot, and especially in the community of the believers. Therefore, sa ato, if that is the true health of a person that's cultivated to live a holy life. Okay? And as we live a holy life again, no, nindot ang atong relationship sa ginoo. The number two, ng application na to, Ephesians 6.14. Holiness or godliness in an effective, is an effective tool to defeat Satan. Okay? Holiness or godliness is an effective tool to defeat Satan. It's righteousness, it's righteousness, it's holy integrity and uprightness that defeats Satan. And so, when we live in holiness, the eye, no, we live in victory. And we don't give Satan to accomplish his purpose in our lives. Let's remember that Satan's purpose in our lives is always to destroy us. What gay laing, pamaagi, or purpose is Satan sa atong kinabuhi but to destroy us. And in order to defeat Satan and all its plan and purpose sa atong kinabuhi, live a holy and godly life. That's number two. Number three, in our witness, in our witness, Holiness gives credibility to our witness. Holy ways will, no, e, will enhance our testimony, while worldly ways will all undermine our testimony. Maulaw sa siguro kita, magwitness nga nga tong kinabuhi is na, badlungon. It's difficult for us to witness 
when we live a, a life you know, that is contrary to the teaching of the Word of God. Okay? But when we live in obedience to the Lord, it becomes, it gives thirst to this, to, you know, to, to, to the righteousness in the Christ that we have. Holiness, okay, while those who, okay, again, number four, it gives us happiness. Lasting happiness. Okay, those who chase happiness will miss it. While those who pursue holiness through the grace of God. Makadawat kita og joy. As it is a byproduct. No? Sa ito ang uh, relationship. Okay? And so, I will end with this. Now, this is a quotation from Oswald Ch Chambers. The distinct end of man is not happiness nor health, but holiness. God's one aim is the production of saints. He is not an eternal blessing machine for men. He didn't come to save men out of pity. He came to save men because He had created them to be holy. And when we live a holy life, no, align it as a purpose again. Like you know. All of this, nigina desire na to, will just be a byproduct, a result of having or living a right relationship, and a result of, no, a living rightly. And so, I hope it's my prayer for us, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, by the grace of God. No, we'll have to live, we will live in conviction. Okay? Let's not allow sin to ruin or destroy us. But instead, let's holiness, embracing, obeying the command of God, will be the way for us to enjoy life and to please God. Especially as we anticipate the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. First John chapter two, verse twenty-eight. And now, little children, abide in Him, that when He shall appear, we have confidence, and not be ashamed before Him at His coming. If you know that He is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of, born of Him. Ang ginoo, hapit na mabot. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. His coming is imminent. Therefore, to prepare to live a holy and godly life no, will really prepare us. And that, it will give us the confidence to meet the Lord. Father in heaven, salamat sa imong pulong. Bless this. That we'll be able to apply this in our own lives. With conviction, we live a holy and godly life. We'll repent and forsake sin in our lives, any foothold of Satan in our lives. Lord, help us, forgive us for all the sins that we have committed. Allow us to be free from the bondage of sin and to live in holiness, that we will live in right relationship to you, that result sa insakto nga pagkinabuhi, you know. Thank you. This is in Jesus' name, amen.